Welcome to our Wednesday afternoon Bible study, session 9. We will be finishing up the fourth chapter of Luke today. Uh, as you know, uh, you can use any Bible translation. Go ahead and grab it and get ready for the Bible study to follow along. The readings come from the World English Bible, which is public domain. They are read by uh, Winfred Wardell Henson from LibriVox.org, and that also is public domain. So uh, let us begin with a word of prayer. O oh God, we know that you have revealed yourself to us through Jesus Christ, and you continue to speak to us through your scriptures, through our fellowship, and through your spirit who dwells in us. Speak to us today. Give us a mind of honest inquiry as we read and reflect upon the Gospel of Luke. In exploring this gospel, may we come to know you better, and may we gain insight into our own lives and situation. Amen. He said to them, Doubtless you will tell me this parable. Physician, heal yourself. Whatever we have heard done at Capernaum, do also here in your hometown. He said, Most certainly I tell you, no prophet is acceptable in his hometown. But truly, I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the sky was shut up three years and six months, when a great famine came over all the land. Elijah was sent to none of them, except to Zarephath in the land of Sidon, to a woman who was a widow. There were many lepers in Israel in the time of Elisha the prophet, Yet not one of them was cleansed, except Naaman, the Syrian. They were all filled with wrath in the synagogue as they heard these things. They rose up, threw him out of the city, and led him to the brow of the hill that their city was built on, that they might throw him off the cliff. But he, passing through the middle of them, went his way. After this brief and glorious introduction to the public, Jesus seems to be picking a fight. Suddenly his gracious words change in tone. The local people are angry over Jesus' kindness to others. He is doing marvelous things for everyone else, but not the people he grew up with and who know him best. Where is his loyalty? The phrase, physician, heal yourself in this context would be a way of saying, Charity begins at home. His detractors would want to know he isn't, why he isn't healing his own people and his own town uh, instead of gallivanting around healing everybody else. Far from appeasing his critics, Jesus throws more gasoline on the fire, quoting the Old Testament examples of God caring for non-Israelite outsiders. The widow of Zarephath, found in 1 Kings 17, 9 to 24, and Naaman the leper, found in 2 Kings chapter 5, are the examples that he quotes. God's charity doesn't begin at home, apparently. Sometimes it begins away from home, among the outsiders. Luke makes it clear from the very start of the ministry of Jesus that Jesus isn't simply here for the Jewish people or his own hometown. And this marks the end of a short-lived, smooth start to his ministry. He will continue to draw amazing crowds, but there will always be an element of suspicion among them, including the people of his hometown. Jesus really angers the folk, fickle crowd, so the folk that he is known best by are the folk who run him out of town, meaning to push him off a cliff and kill him. Then he mysteriously walks away while they do nothing. Some questions to consider. The people in Jesus' hometown seem rather fickle, shifting in an instant from admiring his gracious words and to wanting to kill him. Have you seen other examples of the fickleness of public opinion? How fickle are you? How do you feel when local people spend more time helping non-locals than locals? How important is it for charity to begin at home? How much time and money should congregations spend on ministry to non-local or non-Christian people? When the angry crowd was about to push Jesus off a cliff, he 
passing through the middle of them, went his way. What do you think happened here? Was it a miracle? Did the crowd realize what they were doing and sober up? Did Jesus turn into an invisible man? He came down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee. He was teaching them on the Sabbath day, and they were astonished at his teaching, for his word was with authority. In the synagogue there was a man who had a spirit of an unclean demon, and he cried out with a loud voice, saying, Ah, what have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. When the demon had thrown him down in the middle of them, he came out of him, having done him no harm. Amazement came on all, and they spoke together, one with another, saying, What is this word? For with authority and power he commands the unclean spirits, and they come out. News about him went out into every place of the surrounding region. Jesus seems to have very strong connections to Capernaum, and that's where Jesus can be found teaching and healing on a Sabbath. This incident can also be found in Mark's Gospel. Look at Mark chapter 1, verses 21 through 28 if you want to find it. Luke changes the story very little except to polish it up and simplify it a bit. The story establishes the authority of Jesus. He teaches with authority, and unclean spirits obey him. Some questions to consider. What do you think people meant that Jesus taught with authority? Was it his tone of voice, his attitude, or something else? Do you think the authority of Jesus outweighed the authority of the Jewish scriptures? What is your highest authority? Why do you think unclean spirits obeyed Jesus? Did they have to, or did they choose to? If unclean spirits obey Jesus, why don't ordinary people? He rose up from the synagogue and entered into Simon's house. Simon's mother-in-law was afflicted with a great fever, and they begged him for her. He stood over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her. Immediately she rose up and served them. When the sun was setting, all those who had any sick with various diseases brought them to him, and he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. Demons also came out of many, crying out and saying, You are the Christ, the Son of God. Rebuking them, he didn't allow them to speak because they knew that he was the Christ. Again, this story carries over from the Gospel of Mark, but there's one kind of interesting difference. In Mark, Jesus heals Simon Peter's mother-in-law after he calls Peter to be a disciple. Look at Mark 1, 29-34. While in Luke, Jesus heals Peter's mother-in-law before he calls Peter into discipleship. Now that's verses Luke uh, 5, 1 through 11 is where Peter is called. As in Mark, Jesus is established as the healer par excellence. Luke repeats the messianic secret theme in Mark. Uh, Jesus keeps his real identity as Messiah secret from everybody else. Although the theme is less pronounced in Luke, Jesus spends much time teaching in the synagogues, but it's his actions that strongly attract people to him in the end. Some questions to consider. What difference, if any, does it make if Peter's mother-in-law was healed before or after Peter was called to follow Jesus? Are the actions of Jesus connected to his teachings? Does it matter? If many people were originally drawn to Jesus because they wanted something from him, like healing, do your actions tend to confirm or deny your words? How does Jesus heal people today? How have you experienced his healing power? When it was day, 
he departed and went into an uninhabited place. And the multitudes looked for him and came to him and held on to him so that he wouldn't go away from them. But he said to them, I must preach the good news of God's kingdom to the other cities also. For this reason I have been sent. He was preaching in the synagogues of Galilee. Once again, Luke highlights the importance of the synagogue in the ministry of Jesus. Jesus starts his ministry in the heart of the Jewish world among Jewish people. Evidently, his message at this time did not conflict too much with the traditional Judaism that he was uh, finding himself among, or he wouldn't have been able to or invited to preach in all of those different settings. Uh, the crowd wants to tie him down and keep him for themselves, but he refuses. I must preach the good news of God's kingdom to the other cities also, he replies. We don't get to keep Jesus for ourselves. He belongs to the world. Some questions to consider. Jesus was preaching regularly in the synagogues the good news of God's kingdom. What do you think exactly was the content of this message? How do you think that message fits into the traditional Judaism of his time? <coughs> Are there people today who want to tie Jesus down and claim that they're the ones, the only ones, who have him right? How do you see Jesus at work among other people, other people? churches, other cultures, and other nations. Well, this concludes our Bible study for today. Next week, we will pick up with the fifth chapter of Luke. Uh, let us end now with a word of prayer. Well, God, we are grateful that you are our God, that you continue to watch over us, that you're guiding us through these difficult and uncertain times as we lean on you and follow Christ, empower us, and Guide every step of our path. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.